encounter with a hermit. I continued my way to the heights, to the mountain of my transfiguration, and finally, after great effort, I reached the place which I wanted to visit. I stood outside for a little while to cool down. The cell of a hermit, I thought, is not only a place of mystery, but also a heavenly place. He who dwells there and occupies himself with Isichia and prayer is an apostle of Christ. St. Gregory Palama says this in a homily to the Thessalonians. His starting point is that of the Apostle Thomas, who was not able to see the resurrected Christ on the Sunday of resurrection because he was not with the group of disciples. When, however, after eight days he joined the apostles, he saw the Lord, and the saint of God recommends, on Sunday after the divine liturgy, take great care to find somebody who imitates the apostles of Christ and remains in retreat, and through prayer in quietness and chanting of hymns, desires Christ. If you find him, enter his cell in faith as a heavenly place, because it has the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit, and remain there as long as possible, talk with him about God and divine things, ask guidance with humility, and invoke help through his blessing. Then the Lord Jesus will come to you too, invisibly, as in the case of Thomas. He will grant peace to your soul, he will add to your faith and give you support, and he will count you among the chosen ones in the heavenly kingdom. Following the saint's instruction, I approached this particular cell regarding it as a heavenly place. Inside I had the sense that the Yeronda was an apostle of Christ, who had already seen Christ, and was now in the upper room of Jerusalem. Thus he was deified and was participating in the uncreated energies of God, and had everything that God has, yet without having his essence." According to St. Gregory Palamas, he who is deified through grace acquires all that God has, without also being identified with him in essence. How could I possibly see him differently, since the God seeing St. Gregory spoke about him like that? I had the desire, like Thomas, to see Christ. That is why I decided to approach him with great humility and contrition, and to put into practice whatever he would tell me. As the reader will come to discern, I felt in my soul profound peace thanks to this conversation about God and things divine. I knocked on the outer door of his hut. Endless peace reigned there which scared me a little. Some slow spaced steps were heard. The door opened quietly and one of the disciples of the Yeronda who lived there appeared in front of me. Your blessing, the Lord bless you. I would like, if it is possible, to see the Yeronda. Is he busy? You should be very discreet when you visit a hermit. You may stop him from prayer. He may be in a state of divine rapture on Mount Tabor, and you may bring him down to the noisy earth. It is the worst thing you could do to him. He would not be distressed if you insulted him, but only if you called him from the mountain. At the same time, however, that would be the best thing you could do for yourself, because it would fill you with divine fragrance. The brilliance he has absorbed will blind you. He emerges from prayer as if a flame, just as Moses shone when he came down from Sinai, and the Israelites could not see him, as he was like the red-hot iron after removing it from the fire. You experience a sweet scent of immortality. I will ask, the disciple said. He returned after a few minutes. The Yeronda is ill, but he will get up to see you. Let us go in if you wish. I stayed a little with this young monk. I was moved by his presence in that rugged setting, by his life, his youth in that austere region. Although I did not know him, I felt admiration for him. Are there many of you here? I asked. The Yeronda and his three disciples. I would like to discuss a few things that have been preoccupying me. That is why I came here, to this solitary place. It is good that you have done so. Pilgrims should come here with this sort of feeling. Some of them come here simply because of a superficial curiosity. 
they come to see the Yeronda in person, and then they boast of having seen him. These people make him exceedingly tired. He feels that they are like visitors to a zoo, like tourists. It is good then for you to ask spiritual questions and address problems that concern you. And you should know that you won't hear theories. He speaks out of experience. Yeronda lives these experiences and he speaks about some of them to his visitors in order to help them. No sooner had he finished than Father appeared before me. He was like the sun which rose suddenly like spring which cascaded joy, like a lightning in the night. His white beard fell like a waterfall from his face, his eyes penetrating, shining bright. I had rarely seen such transfigured eyes. St. Gregory Palamas says that the apostles, upon seeing the uncreated light on Mount Tabor, had their eyes first transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit, so that they were able to see it. Do you understand? In front of this light, the eyes of those who see according to nature are blind. This light, then, is not observable if it comes before the eyes of simple gazers. It is only discernible by those whose eyes are transfigured by the power of the Holy Spirit. They have been changed, and it is by this change that they can see our mortal nature has received it from God by union with the Word. And this father, who had frequently seen the light of Tabor, had eyes transformed by this experience. The change was very distinct and a blessing to witness. Your blessing, I said, bending low to kiss his hand which showed the marks of many prostrations. Yet he bent lower than I did and was first to give the kiss. I was stunned. But father, why have you done this to me? an unworthy servant of God, just one of the herd? Ah, you are a priest and you have the grace of God. What have I more than you? We who live in this wicked world are full of sins, whereas you in this desert enjoy the grace of God. You have become the golden throne of God, the fiery cherubim. The scriptures are engraved three times within your deep heart, so that you have the noose of Christ, and you have become the living dwelling place of Christ in the Spirit. How is it that you have done this to me? I was complaining as if I had been overcome, and indeed I had been overcome by his saintliness and his humility. Quite often we are touched more deeply by a person's humility than by what he says. His love is more upsetting than his strictures. It seems to me that you do not know the way we think in the desert, he said, bowing his head. One of the characteristics of Isichia is awareness of one's sin. A man who watches himself every day sees such sinful states, such temptations of the devil within himself, that he feels himself to be truly the very worst of sinners. I want you to believe me, my father. Everyone who comes into my cell is holier than me. He is an angel of God. I said nothing. He grabbed me by the hand and leading me with great love as if I was blind. He took me to the little church. I felt at that time like a blind man in front of the scorching light of the sun, powerless in front of a giant, a small child in front of a wise old man. His first action was the prelude to another which would come a little later. How safe I felt with him! What indescribable grace! I can feel his warm hand even now. We went through two small doors where you had to bend down in order to pass. Everything shows humility here. You should always enter the cell of a hermit bowed. You should forget who you were or who you are. There is no place here for people who think highly of themselves and are selfish. We came into the small chapel. He took me to venerate the icons of the iconostasi and the holy altar while he was lighting the small oil lamps, chanting at the same time the Apolitikion of the saint, to whom the church is dedicated. The first thing they will tell you, whichever monastery or cell you go into, is to venerate the icons of the church. And the first mark of friendship is to give you the holy relics to venerate. They make it rich. 
The relics of the saints which are preserved with so much reverence show the absence of the saints from the world, but also their presence in the world by grace. When the soul of the saint leaves the body and reaches her completion, the whole body receives divine grace. This is how the miracles of the holy relics and their fragrance are explained, according to St. Simeon the New Theologian. In this small chapel, Vieronda and his disciples feel the kindness of the Lord and participate in the mystical supper. Later he took me to a place which he said was the sitting room. There were a few stools and some books of the fathers, the Philokalia, the sayings of the Desert Fathers, St. Isaac the Syrian, St. Ephraim the Syrian, St. Gregory Palamas, etc. We sat down on two stools. He called me to come near him, and then he was enfolded in silence. Obviously he was praying to God to enlighten me to see myself clearly, and for himself to be illumined so that he should say what was needed. <laughs> 